All right, so I've got uh, three networking devices that are all TP-Link, and my gateway is TP-Link, uh, and I've got the factory firmware on that because I've got gigabit internet, and for whatever reason, OpenWRT uh, caps out at about 300 megabits per second, and the default factory firmware does get gigabit speeds. So uh, later on for my internet gateway, I'm gonna put a different device on that. But I've got two uh, TP-Link Archer C7 version two routers uh, elsewhere in my house for wireless access points and for ethernet connections and that sort of thing it, as uh, used as a bridge. And so I got one recently to have better Wi-Fi in the kitchen, not in the kitchen, in the, in the dining room where I like to work on my laptop. And it shipped with 2015 firmware. Uh, and so all I had to do was get the OpenWRT bin file and upload it using the web interface. And it just, no issue. I connected it to my laptop and... Uh, uploaded it and then it it won't work it won't reload and then just go to um the you know instead of 192.168.0.1 go to 192.168.1.1 super easy didn't take any time then i just configured it for uh, a wired bridge let's see bookmarks and I'll pull this out, the wired bridge. Of, I'll have it configured. It's it's well documented on OpenWRT. It's taking me, bridged AP. It's taking me a little bit longer because I don't have my bookmarks up. So right here, super easy. And so, yeah, that's one of the access points that I have. And so that was very easy. And then, I, but I've got another one that's had the uh, factory firmware on it. And it just... I'm not getting that many extra features from pu putting OpenWRT on it. It just bothers me with it being closed. For example, there's an SSH service running on it and I can't log into it. I don't like that. It's a my own device. I want to have full access to it and full control over it. But the issue is I, of course, kept the firmware up to date and had it on this version. And if you try to upload the uh, OpenWRT firmware, it'll give you this 18, what is it called? 18, uh, 18005 error. And so I was like, well, I'll downgrade it to 16. Same thing. So apparently on this version, they locked it down. This was at least for the US version. They locked it down. So that wouldn't work either. And fortunately, people, and I was like, ah, maybe I could try to downgrade it to even a lower version. <clears throat> and I thought, well, maybe not. I don't want something to go go bad and end up breaking it. I don't know. But it bothers me, etc. And so, but I saw here on a DDWRT forum that uh, I have two confirmations and if there are two people confirming that they were able to downgrade it, um, then, okay, it's not just one person who's crazy who's saying they were able to and they weren't. So this person confirmed they were able to downgrade it to this version. So this is super tiny on my screen. But you see here, 2015, 3 March, uh, March 4th of 2015. So this person was able to downgrade it. And then someone else down here confirmed. You can look at this on your own. But uh, anyways, they have this link here uh, to the downgrade file. And uh, so the way you downgrade it is through uh, you set up what, a computer as a TFTP server. And what these guys or people used was the Windows TFTP option. And I only have Linux around here, so I use Linux. And I and I realized I, I struggled with it for a bit. I realized I didn't have my TFTP 
TFTP server configured correctly. And so that was the point of it not, that was why it wasn't working correctly for a little while for me. And uh, so they've got instructions here. And what really helped me a lot was the OpenWRT wiki. I tried, so what I had tried was ATFTP, this package. You can also use ATFTP, ATFTPD for a daemon. <clears throat> so I was trying to use this. And when I got to the part where I was trying to test it, this was not, I, I finally wised up. I was like, well, I need to con confirm that this thing's actually working. I was like, well, I realized it because of this, honestly. <laughs> I've been trying to fit this in late in the evening real quick. And that's the problem when you try to do something real quick and ends up not working too well because you you don't think clearly through every step. Um, but finally, I wised up and I was like, well, I need to confirm that it's actually working. And I don't know why, but I could not get ATF T P D to work on Debian 10. However, this, no issue. And I, I was able to start the... Um, man, this the name of this is a mouthful. The the TFTPD, I was able to start it and I was able to confirm on my own on the server itself, which I, I was using my laptop as the TFT, TFTP server. I was using my laptop. I was able to confirm this way and I was able to go to another computer uh, on my network and confirm that it was working. Um. So let's see. So if you do all of this, you set the directory where it needs to be. Make sure you set permissions, the user and permissions correctly for that directory. Um, so yeah, whatever. Here they give instructions. And you might want to chmod it, C-H-M-O-D, change mode, and just... I did 777 for the directory, and I I bet 666 would have worked, but I don't think it needs to be executable. But I just did 777 for the file, and it was fine. And I made it, made it this. And I don't know how much this matters, but maybe this does matter. I don't know. Not sure. But, uh, yeah, make sure you change your permissions and make sure you get the file name right. So on the Archer C7 V2... Uh, make sure you get this exactly right. Uh, so this is a great resource here for using Linux. D Once again, DNS mask is the thing that worked. ATFTP did not work for me for whatever reason. Um, and so, yeah, make sure you follow all these steps here. And now for me, uh, I, uh, I don't know. So you got for... The Archer C7 version 2, this is what I have. Make sure you get the right hardware version because these things have multiple hardware versions right here. For the version 2, which is already a pretty, pretty old router, but whatever, it's got 5 gigahertz, it works. Um, for that version, anyways, these are the instructions with TFTP. You have to name it a specific thing. Make sure you look at the instructions for your device. And so I'm not used to using Network Manager. I don't know how to configure it. Or, I mean, I didn't look up how to configure it with a, with a, a static IP and all of that. So I just use Etz Network, Network Interfaces file. And I just, um, so uh, let's open up that file. Put it over here. interfaces all right make sure there's nothing so in your interfaces file let's see whatever i'm sure it's probably fine not to show my device ids okay here we go so in the ets network interfaces file uh, you want to have that, that's going to be there. And then DHCP, this is what would normally load. 
but what you want to do and so that would be loaded and i disabled uh you 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 can if you have system d you want to disable network manager or stop network manager disable it to you know have it stopped on reboot so sudo system ctl disable uh, stop network manager um sudo system ctl stop network manager and you can do right there I don't know and one other thing yeah do that and then uh, on reboot that'll restart though so and make sure you do status to make sure it is stopped you know, status and it'll confirm that it's stopped and if you want to switch to an interfaces file once again you you so you need to do this uh, I'll just show this file network manager network uh, on this machine it's I am using network manager but that would be changed to false and then uh, you know you switch to the to the ETS network interfaces so um, yeah when I was testing it out I kept it on DHCP and I disabled I I, I ran my laptop as the uh as the uh tftp server so um when i was testing it i used dhcp and had everything connected up so i could test from a different computer that uh and pull so how do we test that let's let's look at that uh testing it is provided here in the openwrt wiki right here there's instructions for testing it you need this package um, okay where was I um, so these are my steps I made notes of this I wanted to share maybe this helps someone I'm a little bit all over the place with this because it's just a video I wanted to make real quick um, all right, so I, I, I set you want to probably maybe set up all the TFTP stuff first and then test it out. And then once you know it's working, I went ahead and reset the router to defaults. And then uh, I downgraded to this first. I didn't, I don't know if that matters or not to the 2016 version. And then the TFTP server using DNS mask. I, uh, you know, you want to check and make sure it, it's working. Um, and so f once you are sure that once you've tested from another computer that your recovery file, uh, in our case with the Archer C7 V2, it's called this. Once you test that it's working, that'll give a confirmation as you can see here. It'll say received. Otherwise, it was timing out when it wasn't working. Uh, then what you'll want to do now in your ETS network interfaces file, what you will do is you'll comment out this, the DHCP line, comment that out, and then you can uncomment this. Now keep in mind, these are the specific instructions for the TP-Link Archer C7 V2. And so uh, I commented that out. Now you save it. And then what you want to do is you want to bring down your network interface and then you bring it back up. And then after you do that, uh, your IP address, this will be your IP address. And so the way you can see this, what this ID is for or name is for your computer is by running IPA and also after you run this command and bring back up your network interface uh, or network interfaces uh, also uh, the command also lets you to see what this is for configuring this and it lets you see and confirm that this is indeed your address so um, that's how you would bring down and bring that back up again
And then go to your router. It's the moment of truth. Go to your router. Let's switch that over here. Do that like that. Then shut down the router, power it on again, hold that reset button until the opposing arrows light up. I forgot what that stands for. Anyways, when you this is a thing that I wasn't sure about because these things are kind of weird sometimes. Um, when you first turn on the Archer C7, everything lights up. So you don't release it at that point. So everything lights up, including the, air, the opposing arrows. Arrows. However, wait about three seconds and then to see that thing lit up and then release it. Okay. Then wait five minutes, set a timer, wait five minutes. And uh, then it should be downgraded to this version. Just go to 192.168.0.1 and then check status in the top left on the TP Link uh, interface, uh, on the TP Link user interface. Uh, and uh, make sure it says that the, it's this build number. And then you can uh, take your openwrt.bin file that you downloaded from openwrt. Make sure you get the right one. You don't want to brick your device and rename it to firmware.bin or whatever they uh, direct you to rename it to. And then you can, and then because you're prior to that 2016 firmware, you can just happily upload it in, using the uh, web interface. Upload that thing using the web interface. So, um, yeah, that's right there. I think that's about everything. And then uh, wait five minutes. You can watch it in the web in the web thingy, and um, then change your interfaces file. Back to DHCP again, right there. Change that thing back to DHCP so that it would be as you see here. That's uncommented and that's commented. And uh, then restart your interfaces, IF up, then no, IF down and then IF up. And then restart it again and then go to 192.168.1.1 and that will be open WRT and uh, you can I trust that you can figure it out and configure it from there. But uh, this was a little bit all over the place because I just threw it together. But maybe it could help someone out there, and I hope so. And I hope I haven't thoroughly confused you. But post a question if you have any questions. Good luck. Be careful. Be careful. Don't break your router because that doesn't feel very good to do that. But it, the good thing about this Archer C7, the, the good thing about having an old router that's still five gigahertz is you can find a used one on eBay. Uh, I see one listed here and, and somebody's selling one for 10 bucks. And the one I bought was 15 bucks. And uh, the one I bought didn't come with a power cable, but I already had a power cable. Those power cables are like eight bucks. Uh, and the one on for 10 bucks didn't have antennas or a power cable, but I already have those things. So if you brick it, maybe you can find, maybe it's only like a 10 or $15 loss. If you're just like, ah, I bricked it. I don't know how to fix it. Don't, don't cry too much. Uh, and I'll cry if you have like a $200 router, then I, I'm sorry about that, but, uh, be careful. Uh, and don't, you know, double check, do your own research, make sure you have the right firmware for the right device and all of that. And good luck and take care.